I want to talk to you briefly on what I call winds beneath wings. Wind, wind beneath wings. If you see a bird fly around this level of latitude, that bird doesn't have enough support of the wind. If you see eagles fly to the highest mountains, it's because there is a wind that carries them. And most bears run away from storms, but eagles love storm. And that is why eagle loves storm is that is the trouble that carries the eagle to where it needs to go. So you realize that when bears are flying, they do a lot of <laughs> flapping of their wings. Maybe ten within one second. But an eagle will do one or two in a minute. So you see that sometimes in life there are people who struggle. They will do a lot of things before they succeed. Some they do one, two. And they are so tactful and they become successful. Because people who are successful know who and what are the wings that makes their wings fly. As most of the times, people who are wings beneath our wings, if you're not careful, you will never recognize them because they look insignificant. Most of them, in reality, are not even called by God. God doesn't call those people. You call them. You need to find a way of associating with them because of the vision that you carry. Most of these people, God will not come to you and tell you that, Francis... This person will help you. You associate with them based on assignments and what can be developed. So sometimes you never see their worth until sometimes they are dead. They leave the business. They vanish out of your life. Then you begin to see that there is a big vacancy. Many have become poor after their father died. But it's not true. Sometimes you can see Jesus about to be born or Jesus is born. And can you say that while the Messiah is born until he goes to the temple at 12 to be dedicated and two women or two people, one Simon, one aunt, come and tell him that, listen, for all our life we have been praying, God said we will not die until you are born. <laughs> so now that you are born, we can go and die in peace. And Mary didn't know that the angel that visited her didn't just appear. The angel appeared and said, you have obtained favor because some two people that she doesn't know anywhere prayed. Now, what if Mary had seen them one day and slapped them? This will take me to a story that I'm sure none of you have heard before. Numbers chapter 20, 1 and 2. Why did Moses miss out on the promised land? It's because one person in his life died. Numbers chapter 20. A very common scripture. We're doing a lot of, but I want to trust God to close early for you. Then the children of Israel, the whole congregation, bridge ministries, came to the wilderness of Zin. In the first month, the people stayed in Kadesh. And Miriam, note this. You know Miriam? I've already known Miriam, right? Miriam died there. And was buried there. Let's look at the next verse. Now there was no water for the congregation, so they gathered together against Moses and Aaron. The next verse. And the people contended with Moses and spoke, saying, if only we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. Verse 4. Why have you brought up this assembly to, unto the wilderness that we and our animals should die there? Now if you continue, you show that Moses took his rod and struck the rock and water came out and 
God came and said, because of what you've done, your eyes should see the promised land. You will never step there. When I read this story, I began to ask myself, why is it that a woman dies and all of a sudden, a whole congregation lack water? Before this time, they've never lacked water. What was she doing? I had to do studies. So. That this woman dies, and I understood why Moses prayed to God that saved this woman when she even insulted him. And now, even understand why, when she was leprous, Israel would not take one step. Because if they took the step, the Bible said when God cursed Miriam with leprosy, the whole Israel stayed seven days. They didn't go forward. Because the woman could not go along. Why would this woman not go along? Because she was placed strategically in the life of Moses to be the reason why there's water. You see, sometimes, I say this, that sometimes we men, we joke, we employ maid to sweep and clean. We pay them. But if your wife was cleaning, you would never pay. You are quiet. Oh. You go to work and you, you employ a babysitter to take care of you were three boys, naughty three boys. And sometimes we can say that to the woman that what have you done the whole day? What have you done? We employ cooks and we pay them 1500 a month to cook. To cook our meals. But our wives even cook. <laughs> you don't even see the relevance of it. Not knowing that somebody can cook for you and poison you when you are dead. Should I end now? Who is this Miriam? You notice Miriam was the woman who was first introduced in the Bible when Moses was put in the Nile River. She came into limelight concerning water. When Moses could no longer be hit by his parents, they took Miriam, they put Moses on the river now, they did a basket and put her. And this lady was in the water to follow the basket wherever it went. And she was the one that went to Pharaoh's daughter and said, I know somebody who can take care of this child for you? Because the, the child was small and they needed a lactating mother who could breastfeed the baby. And Pharaoh's daughter didn't have breast milk. And because we were killing the Jewish children, they assumed that there were so many women who have lost children, but she directed Moses back to Amrad and Josabeth, who are the parents of Moses. And she stayed with the parents a while until she was weaned from breastfeeding. And she went back into Pharaoh's house. She was introduced with water. The next time you recognize him also is when they came out of Egypt and they were getting out. And they just crossed the Red Sea water. And this woman led praise and worship to thank God until they met a water again that was bitter. And Moses put a stick inside and the water became sweet. Now, in life, People sometimes don't write about certain people. We don't talk about them because they are not significant to the story. So sometimes, let me give an example. If you come to, let's say, Bridge Ministries, they'll say that the general of is F.D. Yali. F.D. Yali is the senior pastor. But you never know that there can be some people. If they are not there, there's no F.D. Yali. There are so many big companies, it will shock you that there is only a man with a title sitting there but they are the people who make sure things are run. Or is it true or is it not true? 
And sometimes such people are not even known and recognized. They are insignificant to the system. And one of such character was this lady called Miriam, the sister of Moses. Actually, she was the elder sister of Moses. Now, the next thing also recognized in the Bible is that she was recognized as the prophetess. She was a prophetess. So those people who believe that women cannot be prophets, they should look, recheck their story. She was a prophetess. In other words, she had the ability to see, to know, to give direction. Of course, you can never be a worshiper and not be able to prophesy. There is no prophet I know in the world who doesn't like music. If you don't like music, you can't prophesy. When Elisha wanted to prophesy and he saw the wicked king and his spirit had left him, he said, bring me a minstrel and let him play. And as the music was played, the spirit of the Lord came on Elisha and then he began to prophesy. And that was what Miriam was doing. So in terms of today, we will have even seen that Miriam was like the praise and worship leader. Whilst Miriam was the praise and worship leader, please listen to this story very well. His senior most brother was Aaron and Aaron was the priest. Moses was not a priest. Moses was a God. God had made Moses like a God. God told Moses in Exodus chapter 3 that a lot of the things you can do your own research and go and read it. That I'll make you a God unto Pharaoh. And Aaron shall be your priest. So Aaron was the one who lifts the rod and does the miracles based on what he has been told. But people don't know that I'm doing a serious study for the last three months on priesthood. People don't know that you can never sustain an altar, a ministry without a priest. A priest is different from a pastor, a prophet, a teacher, an apostle. A priest is the one who sustains ordinances systems and principles to make sure that things work. Maybe in our modern days we call them administrator. Somebody asked me a question. Oh no God, you said since you started ministry, no church your master, what are the keys? And I laugh because you see there's so many keys that you can be there as a prophet, teacher, pastor, you never know. They are priestly principles. They are what? Priestly principles. I will deal with priestly principles one day. It's a topic by itself. Why will God say, everybody, anoint your right ear, your right time, your right toe? And it's not only for lepers. The priest had to also do it. You will get into it if there is time. You can, the first thing you are to do before you ordained Aaron and his sons, the first thing Moses told them that God said they should do was to anoint their right ear, their right hand, their right toe. Can we go on? Someone say Aaron, Miriam. Everybody talks about Moses, right? Who talks about Miriam? And next, you also realize that there's another character. I want to put these characters together. Then we can go in. And the name of this character is Har. H U R. Har. Har is introduced when, in Exodus chapter 17, Israel goes to war. And Moses, the general overseer, the CEO, the COO, the, you name it, the, was just there. And he lifts up his hands. And business was going on well. Life is going on well. Church is going on well. Ministry is going on well. That's Exodus chapter 17. And whilst everything was going on well, Moses' hands began to grow weary and tired. Then what happened was, Moses... Growing weary and tired simply meant that Joshua of business, the church members, their life, their finances, their home, 
everything about that was going down. So listen, that was a priesthood. Aaron is a priest. The prophet did, he was getting tired. The, his hands were not going, the hands were tired. Aaron knew what to do. His principles and systems sustain things. The first thing Aaron suggested they do was that they should bring a seat for Moses to sit on. Moses didn't suggest it. The next thing they decided to do was to, when they put a stone down for a rock for Moses to sit on, the next thing they decided to do was for Aaron to hold one hand and her to hold the next hand. Now, there are so many theologies, but if you do a lot of comparative study on who was her, her, H-U-R, was the husband of Miriam. He, her, was the great, or no, the grandfather of Bezalel. That God said, I have put in him the spirit of wisdom to build the tabernacle. I've made him so wise. Again, let's look at who was her. Because when Moses was going to the mountain, this thing, I'm sure you never know. To go and meet God to collect the Ten Commandments. Who did Moses leave the church to? Who can help me? Aaron, right? That's what we all know. Because when he came back, who attended the go- who had made a golden calf? <laughs> okay. Let's look at Exodus chapter 24, verse 13. When Moses was going to the mountain, he didn't leave the church for Aaron. He left the church for Aaron and her. He went with his special assistant. Let's read. Exodus chapter 3, 4, 13 through 14. Oh, God. Are we learning? So Moses arose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up to the mountain of God. Good. Let's move on. And he said to the elders of the church, Wait here for us until we come back to you. Indeed, Aaron and her are with you. If any man has a difficulty, let them go to them. If you are not into church systems, you don't understand where we are getting to. Fifteen. Give me the NLT. Then Moses climbed up the mountain and the cloud covered it. And the glory of the Lord settled down on Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, the Lord called to Moses from inside the cloud. Now, this is very interesting because most of you know what we do these days. You go to God. Oh, God, speak to me. God, God, speak to me. Moses goes to God for God to speak to him. God never spoke to him until the seventh day. Moses spoke to God for six days. God didn't say a word. If it is today's believer, how many will continue praying? Oh, who is there? Six days, God is not answering you. It took the seventh day. God always wants to see if you really want to hear him or you just came to get a miracle. Now, then the question will be, if the church was handed to Aaron and her, don't sleep on me here. How come by Ezra chapter 32, it was only Aaron that was ministering when Moses came down? That's a story to be told. But if you read through the Jewish history, it is believed that when the people saw that they can convince Aaron to do the golden calf, they killed her so that Aaron would be incapacitated. They can influence him. And Aaron feared that they would kill him. So he also said, let us do it. I read the Bible in the New Testament. Why is it that they killed James? 
Because Peter always walked with John. He always made Peter, James, and John walk. How come that Herod was able to kill James? Because James was never walking with his other brethren. James was always walking alone. Two cannot walk together except they agree. I tell people this, that no matter how authentic you think you heard from God, consult. Talk to somebody who knows better than you. Are you here? You've gone somewhere else. It's like you are feeling sleepy. Let's close. Because I've not even started. Peter stayed. He was delivered. John was the last person to die. You see, when the enemy wants to finish you, one of the things he does to you is he makes you disassociate yourself from what we call the ecclesia, the church. How did they finish Samson? Samson was not destroyed by Delilah. Samson was destroyed first by his association. How? Samson's first wedding, he went to marry a Philistine. And when he married a Philistine, the Philistine he gave a parable. And when he gave the parable, the Philistines went to com- command the lady to get the key. And the key was given. And when Samson had to now give them clothes, when he went, by the time he came back, they knew he would die. They had his best friend has married his wife. Now, if the devil wants to destroy you, he will make sure that you don't like friends because your best friend has married your wife. So if your best friend marries your wife, the first key you have learned in life is that fear human being. Then he went to his hometown. When he went to his hometown, he got angry and he took foxes and put fire on their tails and they went to the Philistine farm and they burned all the farms of the Philistines in revenge. Then the Philistines came to his hometown and they came to arrest his family people. And they said, bring us Samson, else we kill you. And so when Samson was asleep, his own family tied his hand, tied his feet, and handed him over to the Philistines. The next thing he learned, don't trust anybody, not even family. So, when Delilah was finding ways and means of destroying Samson. It were people around Samson to tell Samson, careful, take it slow. Samson would have had wisdom, but his best friend is gone. His family is gone. He doesn't trust anybody. And in life, you can never live without trusting anybody. This heart will look for somebody to trust. It's either you are trusting God or you are trusting the devil. Everybody needs a relationship. So if all the good people are called bad, you end up calling the bad good. Hey, am I teaching here? My dao. Say amen. amen. If I am Joseph, I would never interpret dreams. Because I spoke my dreams and it is the reason why I'm in prison. You see, so the enemy will always destroy the road map. Sometimes people criticize this state where they said human beings are wicked. The prodigal son looked at a 10 story. I said prodigal son, the good Samaritan. That was the priest came to pass, right? And he didn't mind the guy, right? And he went. Then the Levite also came to pass, right? He didn't mind. Who came to mind the person? A Samaritan. Who is a Samaritan? Somebody that is believed to be a fake prophet. A Samaritan was somebody who was serving an idol. Has turned the worship of God into an idol. But the Bible said when he got down, he got down from his donkey. The priest who came didn't have donkey. If you have donkey, can you put somebody on a donkey? Some of you, with all the ba ba ba, if you have what it took to help, nobody will have called you a fool. What made the good Samaritan a good Samaritan that he came with a donkey? Number one. 
Number two, he had enough money to rent an apartment, put the person in the hospital. He had a business to go and work and still come and take her. A priest doesn't have a business. So in the parable that Jesus gave, if you are not careful, you will say that I prefer to be with a good Samaritan than a priest or You know something that is happening to all of us, many of us? We have come to a place we don't trust anything or anybody. But let me say, anytime you come to a place where you don't trust anything or anybody, the problem is not people, the problem is you. Nobody in the church likes me. You are the one that doesn't like anybody. It's the reverse. Everybody is talking about me. No, you are talking about people. Am I teaching something here? Now, this is, I've just introduced you three characters. I will show you another one very soon. But I just introduced you a guy called her. I've introduced you a man called Aaron. And I've introduced a man called what? A woman called what? Miriam. Now hear me. If you read through Jewish history, they call something the Talmud, which is what the Jews to date, they believe. They believe that Miriam, whilst, you know something? Women, when they are in the house, there is the way they make sure that certain things don't lack. Do you know that Jesus had only men disciples? But when it came to food, he only relied on women. Oh, is it true? Okay, look at Luke chapter 8. Some of you don't read your Bible. Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 9. Before Jesus will talk about Luke chapter 9, his disciples, and Luke chapter 10, verse 1, his 70 disciples, he spoke about certain women who took care of the needs of Jesus. Luke 8. Good. So let's look at it. And certain, read, read your Bible. Go, let's go. And certain who had been what? Healed of what? Now, look, look. If these women were healed of evil spirits, if it is you, you will never walk with somebody who has been delivered from evil spirit. Especially Magdalene, Mary Magdalene, who alone, one woman alone, serving, serving. Demons have been taken from this woman. But look at what they did to Jesus. Verse 3, read. And John, the wife of Susan, Herod Stewart, like the chief of staff, and Susan, a man who provided for him from their own substance. So this is different. Now look at Luke chapter 9, verse 1. So Luke chapter 8, he introduced those who took care of his knees. Luke chapter 9. And he called the 12 disciples and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. Let's move on. The systematic people in Jesus' life. 10. After this thing, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two. Look at something. You need people. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Look at everybody needs somebody. And say, everybody is not perfect. Especially me. So look at someone and say, everybody is not perfect. Especially me. If the person can't point himself, fear the person. You just met a witch or a wizard. When God wants to take you to your next level, he introduces a person into your life. When the devil wants to um, come into your life, he also introduces a person. When the Jews prayed for 430 years, God, bring us, deliver us all, deliver us all, deliver us, deliver us, deliver us, deliver us. us. Who, Who did God bring? Moses. God didn't bring an angel. He brought a Moses. Actually, when Moses came, in the 390th year 
of their prayer. They rejected him. Acts chapter 7 said, they told him, who made you Lord and ruler of us? So Moses had to go and train himself for 40 years. So you, are, you could be spending many more years in captivity because of the person you chose not to embrace today. If you read through history, Jewish history, you will notice that there were things that guarded Israel. Water, pillar of fire and pillar of cloud by night and by day and night, and the manna in the wilderness. Are you hearing me? Now, it is believed by Jewish history, which you might not find in the Bible, by Jewish custom, that Moses shared this responsibility between the, these three people. And Miriam was responsible for making sure that there was always water wherever they were going. And Aaron was supposed to perform priestly duties such that the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud would always be there. By the sacrifices, Aaron allowed to be sacrificed in the morning, in the evening. And Moses was supposed to make sure there was manna. Are you with me? So, to the Jews... They assumed that Moses did everything. But somebody was to make sure. How many of you grew up in a home that you got up in the morning and everybody has a work to do? I wash the car. You clean the hall. <laughs> this one takes baller. Everybody knows their work. So when you come to the house and you see the house is neat, they say, Mama and Daddy, your house is neat. But Mama and Daddy, your house is neat because somebody did their work. And if the people didn't do their work, they will say, Mama and Dada, you are dirty. So let me tell you this. Sometimes in your life, there are some people who are supposed to perform certain basic roles in your life. And failure for them to do what they need to do can make your destiny come to a halt. Can make your destiny be delayed. And they can also determine the pace at which your destiny moves. Let me tell you this. I'm, I've been pastoring since 1995. And I'll tell you something. There is no great pastor I have studied in the world who doesn't have great associates. Mention the name of the pastor and I'll tell you the people around him who are making who we are. You see, the truth about it is that sometimes you, the congregation, you are a big problem because you recognize the set man, but you don't recognize the Aaron. You don't recognize the Miriam. You don't recognize the Ha. And the next thing, you don't recognize a man by name Hobab. Someone say Hobab. And your Ubao. Hobab. H O B. Okay. Hobab. Say Hobab. Numbers chapter 10. Let me be very sure. Verse 29 through 31. Moses, with all his discernment and God, he went to a man by name Hobab, who was his wife's brother in law. And Moses told him that. Now Moses said to Hobab, the son of Ro, the Midian, Moses' father in law, We are setting out for the place for which the Lord said, I'll give to you. God has given you a prophecy. God has told you what he wants to do with your life. God has decided to make you great. Moses said, yes, I agree. Now God has decided to make me great. But he said, but we are setting out for the place where the Lord has said, I will give to you. Come with us and we will treat you well. For the Lord has promised us good things to come. Why was Hobab going to go? Let's go. Because Hobab tried to misbehave. But later, when you have to go reach Judges chapter 4 verse 11 you, to 13, you see that he went. And he said to him, I will not go, but I will depart out of my own land and to my relatives. Sometimes there are people who know things that can help you. And no matter how anointed you are, you must be humble enough to go and tell them that, Pastor Tony, 
God has called me. But based on your pastoral things you do, can you associate with me so that we can go very far? Many people can look at people who are helpful in their life and tell them that is because they operate by a spirit called pride. Okay, let me say it in your own language. We are too known. We know it all. How about said, I won't go. I'll be with my relatives. But look at what Moses told him. That changed his mind. Oh, you've gone, you've changed it. I said numbers 10. Moses said, look at this. Please, do not leave. In as much as you know how we are to come in the world, it can be our eyes. Wait a minute. This is a man who has somebody who is praying for the pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. So that cloud was to guide them. I know something. Hobab has stayed in the wilderness and Hobab knew the sand dunes, knew the snakes and the reptiles, the condition of the desert that he could become their eyes to guide them. Let me ask you a question. You want to get married. Who is guiding you? Oh, so I read the analysis. I was in the dump. Now, boom, 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 boom. You be in the end. You say any hour. Now. Says who? Who told you that lie? Most of you during marriage counseling, when you take people that let's advise you, they can they are listening to the counselor, but they are saying counselor, this thing, the way we love ourselves, you are lying. I love God. You know. So do you think we will fight? Ah! Have you been fought before? Don't worry. When you marry, that's when you know that one plantain can bring divorce. Plantain. One want it ripe. One want it hard. <laughs> one want it cooked. One want it fried. <laughs> now hear me. So spiritually... Miriam was like a rock that guided Israel to the land and any time they had water, as to whether he made them carry basins, as to whether he was using supernatural means, nobody knows. But as soon as Miriam died, the rock was no more producing water. So Moses, the people began to say, Moses, we need water. That was not there. Now, sometimes, let me give you an answer. When Aaron and Mo, um, ah, were not holding Moses' hand, the church was failing. But you know something? The church didn't know. Joshua didn't know that it wasn't Moses who was really working alone. There were some people who were holding his hands up. That was what was making everybody win. I'm sure if you say, Pastor's Appreciation Day, a lot of people say, Reverend hey, Yali. Hey, hey, hey. But there will be people. Can you just imagine? Let me give you a practical example. Can you just imagine a feast of miracle without musicians? This our Minister Andrew and David, them who play the instrument, they are not there. And we're going to put some people there who don't know what to do. You tell them to reduce their voice because they are angry with you. When they finish, they are standing by you lying. Man of God, what, what is it they want their money? Now, let me ask you a question, simple. God forbid. Who in your life? Who do you know in your life that if the person dies today, there will be a vacancy in your life? Write their names down now. Because see, you see, sometimes you never appreciate the value of a person when the person disappears from your life. Now, 
Now, when Miriam went to speak against Moses and God got angry, why wouldn't Moses intercede for Miriam? Because Moses knew the value of the sister. If it is today, so I come and him. He's going to speak against me. I was, I was even surprised. Let me give you, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you this. Uh, can I have your attention? I read the Bible and I cried yesterday. I cried. Miss me, I cried. Here is God telling, I'll deal with it or maybe on Friday, deeper. Telling Moses that Aaron and his sons get a special designer to sew a particular dress for them. Make sure that it is fitting. Make sure that you get them this shoe. Make sure that you get them this thing. This is the kind of food they must eat. Whilst God was preparing something delicious with Moses in the heavenlies for Israel, Aaron was busy on earth doing everything to make sure that what God is saying will not come to pass. God was writing Aaron's history. And what he wants Aaron to do, the kind of respect Aaron must have. He said, take the oil, put it on his right ear, the right ear, and sprinkle it on him. If anybody even touches his dress, he'll be, he'll be in trouble. Because his dress, anything that the oil touches is sanctified. And now Moses comes down. He sees Aaron, the opposite of what is written for him in heaven. Because the people took, they put it what? They took away from him the person that Moses intentionally placed around Aaron to make sure that Aaron is FTC. You know I mean? FTC. Follow the crowd. So Moses put around him somebody who can be able to discipline him. In the epoch. Sometimes when you see people cutting certain people from you, find out what is the real motive that you are cutting the people. It's to make you vulnerable so that they can have access to you. Oh, am I teaching well? Moses, he has all this thing that God has said concerning him. He comes and God says, ah, 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 Moses, God, what? He said, go down. The people you are writing about them, they are forsaking him. And guess what? When Moses was coming, he met um, Joshua in the second chamber of the spiritual realm and he asked Joshua, Joshua, what do you hear? Joshua said, I hear celebration and war. And he said, you at your level, this is how you interpret issues. What you see as celebration or war is not celebration or war. It is a destructive element to destroy a generation. It is sometimes when I'm a pastor and I, I, I also operate as a, as a priest, when you see things happening, you are telling people that this thing, they have a way they interpret it. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody at all. If you've never been to the heavenlies, you can never describe the earthly well. Am I preaching somebody here? Nami Ram is dead. The people say they need water. Moses, in your life, you've never fetched water before. Even though your name, Moses, means taken out of water. And the name Moses means taken out of water because whether you like it or not, it is to Miriam that you got that name, taken out of water. Let me tell you this. Sometimes you will see people, let me give an example, like a Pastor Tony, very significant in my life. And he will do something that you need to speak against and condemn and curse. But before you do that, ask yourself what value the person is in your life. Because in you killing them, the person you are killing is your destiny.
with him. It's a serious, it's a serious thing. Even when God was angry with Miriam, Moses interceded. Why? Some of you, if people around you misbehave, God kill them. Your wife disrespect you, God kill her. Your husband disrespect you, God kill him. Even these days, God, there are so many people who are interested in me. Your associate pastor misbehave. He, kaba, kaba, kaba. God kill this person so that this person can come in. And sometimes, let me tell you this, you must come to a place of knowing that nobody in this world is perfect. Now, one of the things you must treasure most is people should open up their weaknesses to you. Treasure them for even them making you know their weakness. I know you will not clap because you don't appreciate what I'm saying. Oh, amen. Your amen is no good at all. As soon as the congregation could not have water, the first point of call was Moses. Let me tell you, there are some functions, if you try and do it, you will die. I repeat it. There are some functions. If you were to leave what you are doing and do it. Now, sometimes, you can see big companies, everything is going on well, then they sack HR. So as soon as HR is sacked, everybody is leaving the company. So, ah, we, I pay you well. Now, it's not a at all. There was something that glued us. It is the person who made us have the ability to relate to each other. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying here. And you can easily think that I'm paying you well. Why are you going to? Because the glue of the system has been taken away. Thank you. The spinal cord is broken. Everything was crammed right now. Now, if you have to write down seven people in your life that are of value to you, who would they be? Please don't write my name because I'm your pastor. Because maybe when I slap you, you will change it. What did Jesus know about Peter? That even though Peter was always sleeping at prayer meeting, even though Satan wanted to worry him, Jesus said, I have prayed for you. Even with prayer, he still denied him three times. I wonder what you would have done without prayer. <laughs> Jesus' is prayer, even with prayer, the guy denied Jesus three times. What if he had not prayed at all? And guess what? Even after Peter still left church and was fishing, Jesus still went where Peter was backsliding and doing the fishing. And Jesus said, Children, have you caught any fish? Then he said, No, he still couldn't recognize the voice. Then he said, Throw your net to the deep. When they caught the fish, then Peter said, My Lord, my God, we share my house. He met me here again. If it is you, and the person denied you three times, and he has disappeared from your life, he said, They can go. God will make a way. New people will come. It's true. New people will come. New people means new things. Before the person learns to build himself to the level you are, your destiny would have delayed seven more years. Am I teaching well? Oh, is it true? Ask ladies, as they need to understand it than men. Oh, okay, okay, men also understand it. You work with a guy for seven years. All of a sudden, he says that I'll marry you again. And you are like, wait a minute. It's not that you can't get anybody. Well, when will I know this person? How, when, when, how many years will I take to come to this place of knowing this person to the place of bringing the person to the altar? 
When I met you, I was 20. Now I'm 35. So if it took me 15 years for you to do this to me, if I meet the next person, 35 plus 15 is 50 years. <laughs> so you know what is happening to most of us is that our life is always at a reset bottom. People come in, we build a pitch with them, then they go, then we look for somebody else who comes in because we don't have the tenacity, the endurance, the forgiving spirit to let people be. Why are you doing power? How? Let me tell you this. One day Jesus looked at the disciple and said, Blessed is he who is not offended in me. What he means simply means that he Jesus was offending them. He said, Blessed is he who is not offended in me. Who said Jesus didn't offend them? I said it earlier. It is not easy for you at your level. Peter, you have a boat or a ship. Jesus doesn't have one. You give it to him. Now he tells you, go and go to the compound and go and share the food. When he finished sharing the food, he said, go. The people have gone home. Go there. Don't sweep it. Pick all the food and put it in a rubber bag. Well, and rubber bag and bring it. Do you know how embarrassing it is if your family members see that you are going through church and you are carrying the shoppy shoppy on the floor? How many of you think it's a nice sight? Is it a nice sight? No, 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 no. It's so embarrassing. If, it, if Peter's wife has seen him carrying that thing, she says, Oh, how can you disgrace yourself? Come with the Are you put that hungry? Then you go around picking from the floor. Let me tell you this. I get angry with Minister Andrew. I say, I play my own keyboard. That's when you see that my gray hair will multiply. Somebody is doing the thinking about music for me. Someone is doing the thinking about administration for me. Someone is doing the thinking about this for me. All I'm doing to me, so I'm thinking my own thinking. When we put it together, we are moving as an army and we are heading towards where we are going. Who? Have you neglected in your life that is costing you delay in your life? And let me tell you, some of us, or some people, you must be humble enough and go to some of them and say that, please, I'm sorry. I need you. Say, ah! Yes, that's what Jesus did. Even with Peter's denial, he still went to him. He said, but I'm not Jesus. Then you are Satan. Am I giving you good teaching? Do you know that when Joshua took over, as soon as they entered the promised land, the manna ceased. Read your Bible. The manna ceased because it was the duty of Moses. It was the duty of Aaron to perform priestly duties to let a pillar of fire and cloud come. It was the duty of Miriam to make sure that people have water to drink. Okay, now let me ask you, you, what is your duty in the church? Okay. In your family, what is your duty? One day, something very funny happened. In my house, every day my brothers would make telephone calls. I've told you this story before. And their bills would be high. And my mother would pay. So me to one day, I said, I've said it, they won't change. So me to I'll do something. The calls I made, I do. My brothers do. Three of us, we do the calls. For the first time in our history, when school opened, my mom didn't have money to pay her fees. That was the first time I remember going to school. And they said, those who have not paid fees, be on your feet. And I stood up in the class. And the teacher was like, you? Why? The school fees have been used in paying telephone bill. 
because I decided to play wicked. Some of you, you are playing with kid. You are not paying your tithe. Me preach you. You know very well. You have to make sure that there is water for everybody to drink. You, you are not dead, but you need to supply the water. So that Moses will get angry. And strike the rock, and God will say, You won't get to your promised land. Same place, like they are happy to see people angry. Oh, my idea. Okay, let me ask you a question. If you have sitting by a friend, a husband, a colleague, somebody, ask a person and ask, What is my role in your life? Ask somebody, what is my role in your life? If he doesn't have any role, please swap. Don't, don't, don't sit around such people. Let me give an example. Anytime you see people criticizing you, they don't know their role in their life. I never saw Aaron telling Moses, Opododo, you stammer. Because Aaron, you, the reason why God said come and join your brother is because your brother doesn't know how to talk. You were talkative. And I never saw Moses telling Aaron, you talk too much. Because that is, it is his talking too much that brought him qualification. And I never saw David telling people that if not me, like Minister Andrew, if I don't play keyboard, that the anointing will not come. David never said that if it is me, that may so sin. If I don't play the harp, the king is mad. Now, one of the things I do in my life is I find out my position in people's life. The role I need to play. And I try as much as I can to play that role. But let me ask you a simple question. What role are you also playing in my life? Some say, it's my father. Stop that nonsense. I can never be your father until you are a son. He's my pastor. I can never be your pastor until you are a congregant. Am I teaching you something here? Am I, am I teaching you something? Are you here or you are not here? I'll continue on this on Friday. But hear me. When I rented my first building, Oh God, I think I've arrived. The compound became witty. So I asked somebody to come and weed. The guy mentioned like today five or seven cities. And my wife said we should pay. I said, no, 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 it's too much. I said, how? How? This one, like I can weed. So I went to buy a cutlass. I went to sharpen it. Twelve cities. <laughs> and I said, oh, aircraft, now I have cutlass. No problem. And I started waiting. <laughs> My hand, blisters. <laughs> My whole body, painting me. Only small place outside. So I went to buy paracetamol. The following day, when I woke up, I couldn't continue. So I, I made them call the guy. Within one, he was done. And I asked him, Is your body paining you? No. <laughs> Are you okay? Yes. Ah. What is the difference? A lot of the time, we get into unnecessary trouble because what people are supposed to do, we decide to do it. Is it true or is false? The fact that you have money doesn't mean you can buy everything. You can't buy peace. Someone must offer. You can't buy friendship. Someone must offer it to you. So, 
In one of the things that make people poor is our inability to recognize the people that God brings to us who fan us, who become the wind that make us have the ability to fly. If you are not flying, it's because you don't have anybody who is encouraging you, who is motivating you, who is lifting your spirit up. Everybody needs somebody who is just a wind that makes his wings to fly. I'll continue on this.